Thank you. Proper it's job, uh, Globe right number nine. I'll cut a piece off. Double it. And then I'll just tack the pair of scissors and level the ends up. On the hook. Round. And just take your thread down to the bend of the hook. There. And then cut your, your tail about, I don't know, a quarter of an inch. And then this is silver flat tinsel. Uh, not flat tinsel. Uh, what's it called, Deck Flat? Floss? Braid. No, it's like a braid. Twist. No. You see? I know what you mean. It's red. It's not, the, not wire. It's flat. It's called flat tinsel in it, but it's yeah, not tinsel, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Tie that in at the back. Take your thread up to the front. And then back down. I can hear music playing somewhere. And the seal spur is quite hard to do. What I do, I pour a ball of seal spur. I put it in my hand and I roll it, roll it, roll it in my hand and roll it. And then get me thumb, and it breaks it up a little bit, makes it a bit easier to dub, to be, to be honest. And then just put yourself a bit of. You don't, you don't too much seals for. What colour is the seals for, Tim? Black. Thank you. And just take it two thirds of the way up the hook. And then get your, your tinsel. A ribbit. Open turns. Put your waist off. And then I've got some red, it is peacock dubbing, it's the red. Hemingways? Yeah, it's Hemingways. It doesn't have to be Hemingways, use what you want. And what I do, I'll split the thread. If you run the needle up and down the thread, it flattens it out. What thread is it, Tim? Uni thread HO. And split your thread. And you only you only want a bit of red dubbing. Pushed in between the thread. Put it up. Twist it. When you've twisted that, just put ju just one or two turns there. We're off, we're off finished off with the seal spur. And that's your red there. Get your brush. Just brush it up a bit. Any, any really long ones, just pull them out. Is that micro blend you've rubbed that with, Tim? Pardon? Is that micro glint you've read that with? The rib is Vanyard, it's French tinsel. French, oh, is it? French oval tinsel silver. Oh, right. Okay. So I'll brush that out a little bit. They're knotted pheasant tail legs. I usually put three each side, six.
Is he bound if to you lose just, some on you? Yeah, if you just pull them out straight, pull them off. Just put a bit of wax on the thread. And just come over the back of the tail, probably just to where the knots start on the top. And just feed three down each side and then come over the top. And then you'll, you'll work three each side then. And just, when you've got your three each side, tie that in. Put your waist off. And then just tidy up. And then I've got this, what Scott sent me that you in. It's, it looks orange, but it's like a burnt ginger. Select a feather. Pull your waist off at the bottom. And then I'll tighten by the tip. So I hold the tip, stroke back. There. And then the good side's facing me, the bad side to you, and then just tie in. And I'll just fold the, fold the waist back a couple of turns just to hold it. And get your scissors, cut your waist off. And then you can tidy, tidy up. Hackle pliers. If you stand it up, stroke it all back. And then one. Two. Three. And then tie off. Don't worry about the ones coming forward. I'll get them in a minute. Cut your waist. Fold everything back. Just hold it back. And that's the that's the first apple. The second apple is another hen. It's like I wouldn't know what colour it was. It's like a blue dun dun. Yeah. Just select another ackle. Pull off your waist again. Just pull, pull off your feathers again. Your barbs. And get your same again. So you got your front in, tie in, fold it back again. It just helps to hold everything together. Cut off your waist. <clears throat> you can, if you hold the thread, you can pull it and it'll snap off. Same again, fold your barbs back. Backle players. Stroke them back. Now, as you come round, just hold them. I'll just hold them there. Same again. Take your time. One more. 
and that's your three. Oh, and tie him off. Cut your waist stuff. Let's charge up the head. And then get, if you get a jungle cock eye, let's pull them out with the tweezers, strip the waist off, down each side. Just take your time with the tweezers. And then what I do then, I get a pair of scissors. And I just split, split the jungle cock eye straight down the middle. And the price of them, you need to split them. Or, or if somebody's using big jungle cock eyes for salmon flies, just swap them for the small ones. And then get your jungle cock eye, hold him on the side, wrap one, two, one the other side, one, two, and then just maneuver them into position. When you think they look equal, just tighten your thread up and then fold the waist, fold back. And then just tie them in. And then cut your waist off. So that just helps to hold them in position, like a bit more strength when you've doubled them back. I'll just put a little bit more wax on there. Personally, it just makes it a little nice and neater head with the wax on, I think. Sticks a little bit better. And then, Whip, finish. Thread. Nice stuff. That's it. Excellent. Very good. And then I do put on, I do put a tiny bit of resin on them to be fair on the head. Find it. Does it stick with the wax on it? Yeah. Yeah. Is this one of the ones you're doing for Corrib? Yeah. This is still Lawrence finished stuff. Still <laughs> in the bottle. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Lasted well. And then she Torch. He was a nice lad, he was. Uh, funny enough, I was talking to uh, Kevin Sheridan about him the other day. Kevin, Kevin knew him really, really well. And he, he went round and toyed a lot of flies with him every night. And when he'd done the book, Kevin's asked his son about the book and he will do it. His son will not do it. He said, no way. So uh, Kevin's begged him and he said he wouldn't do it. It's a shame. Yeah, it's all there. I think it's all written, all pictures, everything's there, everything. But he said he's somewhat, but Kevin said his son's a bit of a funny bugger, I don't think. Uh, so that's that one.
Brian Ellis. What's he called, Tim? Tiger Clint. Just a, a, a hopper. <laughs> yeah, I just made it up to be fair. But uh, I got a lad who fishes on Corrib and he was on FaceTime with me uh, the other night and we were just going through patterns and then I just changed a few colours, sent him some pictures and he said, told me off a dozen up and I'll try them. So that's what I've been doing, to be fair. <clears throat> Uh, I'll try if I... um, I'll do it. Do you want to do a kindness? Yeah, go on. Yeah. This is that's a kindness what I'm doing for um, the same chap. Uh, I just have to grab a bit of stuff. One sec. What flies you tying for him, Tim? Um. Kindness. Um, then once I've just done some kindness flies, just different wet flies to be fair. I've Any dabblers? Up. Yeah, dabblers, everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My flies, everything. Uh, let me just grab a bit of stuff. Before the hook, man. What size are you doing mostly? Ten, twelves? No, these are. These are 16s, but they're very small 16s. Oh, okay. For the kindness. Mostly, mostly. The big flies are like 10s and 12s at the most. Actually, somebody sent me a video yesterday. That, uh, not yesterday. That one was uh, opening day in Ireland. That was on Corrib. They had a nice brownie off Corrib. Yeah. Well, that's some huge fish in there, too. Yeah, this will be hard to see, but it's um, what hook is that, Tim? You got mate? What hook is it? It's the same, it's the same, it's the same hook, um, but it's in a 16. Black thread again. <clears throat> I'll just take the thread down. And then some cock de Leon. Pull about six, six or seven fibers off. the tail so you got your tail tied in if it's a bit long just pull it back one underneath just to pull it up yeah and then cut your waist off about halfway up the hook Then some brown razor foam. It's all. It is hard to get this. You can you can get it, but it, it's not easy. It's, the only place I know it does it is semi now at Fasner. Cut yourself. Cut a strip off about two mil, and then tie it in forward. and tie it in about three mil from the eye, up to three mil, and then take your thread back down so you cover, cover the foam, lock, lock the foam in.
So you got that like that. And then this is super fine. It's your obvious one, but you don't have to use it. You can use any. It's dark grey. In fact, on there it's Adams. W thread. Don't put too much dubbing on because it's kindness, it's very small. And then just build a little tapered body up till you get to the back of the foam. And then come in front. And then CDC. I use four plumes for this one. It makes it easier when you make the wing make the wings. Any colour? Um, this is just natural, but you could probably use the cream ones or yeah. the one would if you use white. And I put two, so I've got two CDCs curved one way and two CDCs curved the other side like this. Just pick yourself four out. Roughly the same length. When you've lined the tips up, like so, swap bands, hold them by the tips, and I'll just stroke them like so. Yeah. So your tips are lined up now. And then if you Let me just uh, a bit of wax. And you don't you don't want the wings too long. Probably like so uh, probably the length, maybe the length of the hook. Maybe a little bit sh just shy of the hook. Tie them in. Looks like so. And just Not be careful. Sideways on, right? Pardon? Cut your waist off. Yeah, look to be side, be sideways. And then tidy the head up. So it looks like so. And then get your, your thread, when you've tidied that up, back up to the wing and then back down to the eye, leave your thread at the eye. A tiny bit of dubbing. So now you start from the eye with the dubbing and work your way back towards the wing. When you get to the wing, just gently pull the wing forward and come one, two behind. And then a little bit of dubbing what you've got left on, just bring back towards the eye. And then just get your, your foam, split your two CDCs either side of the foam. You just take your time with it, it'll, it'll split. And don't pull your foam too tight because you will it will rip. When you split there, pull your thread over. Couple just to lock it in and then just take the waist off. 
Hold your wings back out the way. <laughs> and then just build a nice little head up. We'll sort the wings out in a minute, don't worry about that. Just an air there. And then whip finish. It's a shame really, because you can't see it very well on that camera. Off with your thread. And then just pull your wings gently. And they'll come nice. And then what I do, I just taper them a little bit each side so they look like a wing. Well, I'll do a deck. I'll send some better pictures tomorrow for uh, on the group. And that's a, just a simple little kindness fly, but it works. Very nice. What's the other fly you tie with that foam, Tim? Um, I'll the foam done. Yeah, you do one of them. Pattern. You do uh, one of them for us. That's a good little pattern, that foam done. Oh, yeah. Just, can you do one for us, Tim? The, uh, all, the upright one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you just had a bear with me to find hooks. Yeah, no worries. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> no. You stuck with us, yeah. Hey, listen, Stu owes me a couple of whiskies. Mm -hmm. Make sure you point that out, sir, Deck. Yeah. <laughs> Willie, what's the weather like where you are? Uh, it's not bad at the moment, but I think tomorrow it's to be horrendous. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> I've got the Land Rover all Good prepped up and ready to go anyway. <laughs> I might need it. But poor old Stuart, he, he couldn't get on. He kept breaking up. Yeah, I had a bit of problem myself. No, Stu's Stu, had too much whiskey. <laughs> Lucky man. So what's your favourite tipple in, Tim? Me? Yeah. I only like cider. I, I don't like whiskey. I ain't keen on whiskey, to be fair. Has Stuart caught any fish while he's been there then, Tim? Yeah, he's had, he had a cracker the other day, a nice springer, yeah. He had, uh, he had one, the, I don't know what he's at, I don't think he's fished much today. I think he's up there and there's uh, some uh, um, Scandinavians over and some up with them. I think they've been fishing mostly. Oh, it's got a dry fly hook. I'll do it on a bigger hook. If I, can you see that better? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. lovely. Uh, what do you normally tie it on there, Tim? Um, that's probably on a... Partridge? Yes. That, that's a Sprite one, that is. But the, I usually tie them on a Partridge, S, the SLD2. Yeah. yeah. What size? Probably a 16. Yeah. Maybe a 14, but mostly 16s. You all enjoy the fly fair. Yeah. It's busy on the Saturday, wasn't it, Dick? Sorry, Tim. It was busy on the Saturday. It was, yeah. Yeah, a lot more people Saturday than Sunday, wasn't it? Yeah. 
It went, he cold, did, it went cold in the afternoon. Yeah, you don't get time to look about. When you, you you get there and you sit down and you tie, and then before you know it, you're going back to the hotel, and then you missed all the bargains. Oh, I wouldn't say you missed all the bargains. <laughs> <laughs> I went up Friday. <laughs> Why is he going up Friday? That's where all the bargains are. Tim? Yeah? Did you see them hair stackers somebody put on Facebook? Yeah, I bought uh, Daniel Clark's ones. I don't know. They're black. Black? I don't know how to describe them, really. It's like... Um, I, didn't, I didn't see them myself. Yeah, Barry O'Clark made a... What the brush is oh, ones? Is it the hair stacker for stacking hair? Yeah. Yeah, it's Barry O'Clark's one. It's oh, not... It? It's, it's brilliant idea. They're giving side each other, don't they? Huh? I like a Russian doll, isn't they? They're giving side each other, don't they? No, he's on about <laughs> the, the, the one for pushing the hair back. Oh, the packer. packer. Not the stacker, the packer, air packer. The packer or the stacker? <laughs> stacker, I think. But it wasn't a very old Clark one, because that's a set of three, isn't it? Set of four, plus a small oh, one. Yeah. Wonder who's, who's was that then? I don't know. Some bloke had only made 200 or something. <laughs> and it, it was a bit, to look at, it was a bit like air tongs with a groove in. Ah, right. Could that, no. could that be what you're looking that's for? A packer, uh, no, that's a packer. That's, that's the packer. Yeah, you, you squeeze it. It's called no, a brassy. Yeah. No, it's not that. It's not that. No, it's not that. No. The one you, the, the one you mind about, Tony, is the, is the packer. It's is the it? Pack. Yeah, it's a packing one, that is. That's the one Barry O'Clark designed, isn't it? I've no that's idea. Cool. It's the stomp that one. It's not the yeah. stomp that one. Yeah, I've got the packer one. is the one that Willie was holding That's up. Brilliant, that is that stomp out one, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, th this one's got a little groove. Yeah, it's no, got it's a not a little groove at the that. front, and you close up and you you push the, the hair yeah. back with it. The what the one Barry's doing is it's it's a bit like that, if you can imagine that. And it's yeah. it's split in the mid right down the middle of there, and it's yes. got a spring, a spring in the back. And it opens and closes when you put your hand on it. It's got a hole in the middle, so the hook fits over, and you just push it back, and then uh, you can open, it, push it back, open it. All right, yeah, yeah. same idea. Yeah, same <laughs> sort of thing, really. To be fair, yeah, the same idea. Yeah, but that's but that you know them um, air stackers, one hundred and twenty quid, them man, yeah. for the set, yeah, yeah, yeah. We use the end of biros. <laughs> yeah. Hole in it, and you can push it over the eye of the hook. Yeah, yeah well, what it is, you can damage it, can't you? If you're not too careful, that's what the stomp out one's got a little uh, rubber thing, uh, foam thing, and it, it down damage down to the air. Yeah, yeah, it's got that. It's brilliant. Yeah, it is. A, it is a good one. I had uh, Phil sent me this after I used yours at the show. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you watch, if you watch, um, oh, what's his name? Somebody Smith. He used to be big friends with, um, oh, blimey, I can't think of his name now. It'll come to me. John Smith. He was big friends with, what's it, Goddard? And yeah. he used the biro tube with a shirt button glued to the end. But yeah, it's probably the same sort of idea, really, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It'll be the same sort of idea, because that's similar to that, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That uh, dry fly hook, and I've got olive thread. You like your petrogen bobbin holders? Listen, I won these in the competition, I wouldn't have bought them, wouldn't you? No, they're too dear. That I do like them, that I do like. I, I wouldn't say I don't like them, I do like them, but I, I, I think they're about 70 quid a piece, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Same as them, them scissors there and my fan yards. And I think they're, I don't know what they are, they're probably 20 odd quid. And they're not exactly the same scissors as Petra Jean, which is 70 odd quid. Exactly. Yeah. They're made in exactly the same place. 
Are they the Reno Renome? Yeah. Good scissors as well, aren't they? Brilliant scissors. Are they, the, um, are they better than the what's it one, the copter scissors? That's we, a different we, thing, isn't they? The uh, copter scissors are good, isn't they? Image. The, the, yeah, little, the little old Italian bloke. The copter, I, I bought a pair. They're real sharp. They are a nice fine point. But I think... You know, I think uh, the, the 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 one that Tim's got there is the Renome, the the long uh, for cutting the CDC. Yeah, but yeah. they they do a full set of them, Derek. They do a small, medium, and large. Yeah, extra large. small, yeah. medium. And brilliant. Them are. You know them scissors you're on about off the Italian bloke. Yeah. Yeah. He come round on Sunday to say to Rox, he stopped in the hotel with us and he chucked us a pair. Did he? No. He, he did on Sunday. The missus got them in the kitchen there. Honestly, they're quite a big pair, but they're like razors. That they're, they're sharp, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. He, he they don't spring loaded for them copter, don't they? But he wouldn't sell me the springs. He says, I've got a colour. He said, I've got none with me. He says, yeah. you can't fit in yourself. He says, because you, you'll hurt yourself. Yeah. <laughs> hey, he come on, he come on Friday. I felt sorry for him. He flew in on Friday. And he come up to the show. He got out the taxi and the taxi went. This is Friday, Friday didn't I? And it, I went outside to get someone out of the car for uh, Mark. And he was stood outside and he said, uh, do you know where taxi rank is? And I said, no, no. I said, I ain't got a clue, mate. He said, I've le left my bag in the taxi. Oh, no. Oh, no. I said, no way. Anyway, my missus had a look and one thing or another. Anyway, he jumped, he phoned him. And they said they'd ask the driver, all the drivers. Anyway, he went back to the station where he got, on, got the taxi from down the road at Stafford Station. And the bloke, fair play to taxi driver, he'd give it in at the station, the railway station. And he come back up to the show and he says, I've got my bag, I've got my bag. I said, oh, well done. I don't know what was in the bag. I haven't got a clue. So when we went back to the hotel on the night. He comes in the bar and we... we had a few drinks, and then we went and had a meal, and we sat in the lobby, and he come in with two bottles of wine, and he shared it all out. He got some glass, shared it all out, and he said, that's what was in my bag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'll bring you back, mate. I'm on a Zoom meeting. Oh, trap, trap, trap. Tim, I've got to apologise, mate. My battery's about to die. So oh, I, mate. No worries, uh, mate. If I, I'm going to carry on watching until my battery goes. Okay, then. I'll get yeah. on before you get. Right. <laughs> right. So I've got Ollie Fred, dry fly hook. I'll take it about three mil down and then back up about a mil away. And then grab yourself some CDC. That size of you can use four. If it was smaller, I'd use three. If it was smaller again, I'd use two. And it depends on the quality you see, DC. So, same again, two one way, two curves one way, two curves the other way. Line your tips up. And then the length of the hook. Tie in and then get your scissors, and I'll just taper them with the scissors down the hook. And then work your way down. What, what some people carry on to left cover the CD, I'll carry on till about what, when you think it's getting very thin into the taper. I'll stop there. I'll get some cochlear fibres, half a dozen fibres, pull them off. The reason I wet them in my mouth is just to keep them in, all into proportion. And then just on there, the tail's in, and then work your way down to the tail. Uh, to the bend of the hook, 
underneath, up, on. And then cut your waist. Uh, your foam you want it a little bit wider this time which I'll say three four mil is it razor foam again yeah When you've cut your strip, just cut a point on the end. I come back up to the middle. We all got up to answer the phone then. Yeah. <laughs> it's for you. Sounds like covers. And I've come from the middle and I'm going back down to the end, uh, to the tail. And just keep, if you just keep lifting the foam up, you'll see when you get to the tail. When you get there, Come back up then and cover your foam. And then work your way back down. And that just tapering the body a little bit. So there's nothing on the foam and the thread is the body. <laughs> right, so when you've got, you've tapered your body, just take your thread back down to the back by the tail and come up probably a mil. Pull your foam over and you come over once, twice, three times. Then pull your foam back and then come up probably two mil. Pull your foam back once, twice, three times, then come up. Just make, make the segmentation a little bit bigger each time. So then we got one, two, three. And the last one, just, be, just behind the CDC. Cut your foam off. And then this is um, just pine squirrel. You don't have to use it, you can use squirrel, any dubbing. Just makes it a bit more buggy though, doesn't it? Yeah, just yeah, just to make it buggy. And then you push that, push that up. And then do two or three turns at the back. CDC, pull it back. And tuck it right under there, under the CDC. Little head. And then... I think sometimes the trouble it. I used to do when I first started, you, you're frightened of pulling and, and doing things. And the fly can be finished after it's tied. And that's it. I just pull the wings back now. Even when I'm doing uh, paired wings, I, I mess about with them loads now. I used to be frightened to death and they used to of cracking them and splitting them and that. Now I just hold them back and move them and you can do anything with them. You're a very tidy tire. <laughs> I learnt off Gareth Lewis. <laughs> no, it's uh, immaculate, superb. Thank you. It's just practice. I practiced another day. Mm. Deck learnt me anyway. Yeah. 
Uh, I think it's just, it's, it's like Gareth says, if, if, there's nothing wrong in being tidy and neat. Mm. Nothing at all. No. The yeah. more you tie, the better you'll get. Mm. Yeah. We yeah. all make mistakes. I make loads. I throw loads of flies away. Well, I wouldn't say throw them away, but you cut them up and start mm. again. Sometimes yeah. it never works. And you get one right and the next one's wrong and one's right and the next one's wrong. But I just, I think once you, if you tie, I, I try and tie 10 if I can or for either six or ten, and I think once you've done one or two, and then you get into a rhythm, mm. they, turn, they turn out the same. And they, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think it's just practice makes perfect, doesn't it? Well, I wouldn't say perfect, but as long as they catch fish, well, it doesn't matter, does it? As long as they catch fish, whatever, whatever you tie or do, as long as you enjoy it, I think that's the main thing. That catches fish, though, Tim, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I just enjoy it. I enjoy the company. I enjoy the friends you meet, and and I've met so many people all over the world that you, you would have never ever met if you had to took up fishing yeah. or even tying. Yeah. And most of them are good people, and well, ninety nine percent of them, and they guess. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your favourite then? My favourite. I ain't got one. I would never. <laughs> say, I would never say that because. It depends where you are, who you yeah. who you with at the time. Because I think <laughs> diddler in it. I, I remember, baby, see, dick diddler. Good answer. I, I, I'll be honest. When I first, I've got a picture. Of, I've got a picture on my phone or Serena's great somewhere of me and Serena watching Stefan Larson tie about four or five years ago at the Bridge Fly Fair, and I was leaning on the desk watching him tie some spinners like this, and I thought I'd love to be there. And I remember two years later, I sat next to him and. I, it's so proud to be there. Yeah. It is an honour to be there and sit next to somebody who you've looked up to for so long. Yeah. Yeah. For, uh, some good tyres out there. Very good tyres. I was looking at Janda Horse the other day, weren't we, Gareth? Yeah, he's, he's a good guy. Uh, how he's, like, he's neat and tidy and he's, he's a good tyre. Surgical. Yeah. Same as Gareth. Gareth's a hell of a tie. Neat. Nah, like you say, you do it enough and uh, yeah. you find your proportions, don't you? And they all come yeah. out ideally very similar. Yeah. That's what we want. I think that's the most important thing is the proportions in the fly, in, in tying the fly, isn't it? I think so, anyway. Yeah. If your wings and your tails and everything's the same length, it looks right, doesn't it? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, it's all about uh, Paul's a good tyre. Paul can tie anything. Yeah, too right. Yeah, easily. Yeah. I'll tell you what. Paul Slayer. Paul Slayer. And you. And you. You can tie anything. Well, it's not, I like, uh, I'll see him next week because he's coming up to uh, Glasgow with you, Mackenzie. I, I think he, he can tie anything, can he, Gareth? Yeah, easily. You know, he's quick and he can tie anything. He's a very knowledgeable person to be with. Are, are, are any of you lads coming up to the Glasgow show? Yeah, yeah. All right, I'll pop in and say hello. Yeah, come and say that. Yeah, yeah. It's only looking... about 10 minutes from me. Is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm looking for all of it there. I think it's a cracking show. Yeah. I like the crack. You've been there, haven't you, Gareth? Uh, yeah, I think it was back in like. 2017, 18, maybe it was a while back now. A few years back. It, it's a good crack up there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, really good. Good, 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 good bunch of lads. Yeah. 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 Uh, hopefully, I get to go away, I guess. You coming, Paul? Hopefully, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All being well. Get, get Are you, do you fly over and then drive, Paul? We did last time, yeah, we flew over, yeah. And I had a car. No, no, a taxi. How did you? Was there, was, there was three of us. We had a taxi from the watch. It worked out cheap to go on the taxi. It used to have a the bus or anything like. It probably used to be fair three of you. Yeah. But I, we stopped in an Airbnb, which was outside. So spent a lot of time waiting for taxis in there and back up. I, I went again. I'd like to stop in the hotel. It'd be far cheaper. Like. Oh, the one next door is just as nice. Well, 
either way, but you, you're waiting around for taxis all the while. It was quite a way where we had to come in and out really before. Yeah, yeah. But they could yeah. do a good breakfast in the out in the Galway Hotel, didn't they? Yeah. The first yeah. day I went in the one up the next, like just down the road, like. But yeah, one of the hotels a good breakfast in there. Yeah, it is a good breakfast. But I think uh, Daryl and them stopped in the one next door up. Up next door, yeah, I know what you mean. It's only a few minutes away, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where George Baron stops in the next door, doesn't he? Yeah. 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 But you could have, have you heard, heard, have you heard from have you heard from Gail, uh, Gareth? Um not for a little while, no. 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 Jim, are you gonna do any more? Shall I stop the recording? Yeah, stop it. Oh, oh, so